Tony. How you doing? Well, it's January, it's cold, and I'm off to do what's become a tradition. Every January, for the last five years, we've gone to a London bookshop and looked through the Writers and Artists Creative Handbook to find agents. So looking for writers. This is another year, another attempt to get signed by an agent. The Creative Writers Handbook is too much money to buy. £50 for a book like this thick and in it we only need this section of it. So what we do is do a sneaky thing. It's kind of mentioned on websites and things. You go in, sit, have a coffee, take some photos, book up some agents and go from there. or so agencies that are potentially good that take sci-fi fantasy etc that is what I've written and what I'm looking to get published now it's just a case of going through each of those agencies finding the right agent and emailing them and telling them about myself telling them about my manuscript and hopefully one of them will see the potential and want to see more but it's not that simple not that simple. Some of the agents are still really old-fashioned, wanting manuscripts written out on paper, bound and sent in for manuscripts. Who still does that? They, some of them don't accept emails. There are a lot of agents in the Writers and Artists Creative Handbook listed, it seems by default. They are on there and when you go on there's no website, no phone number, no postal address. They're either out of business or dead. And no one's remembered to cancel the subscription. So every year they get relisted. There is also a large number of agencies and agents that will not take sci-fi or fantasy. Very clearly stating, do not send this unless you want it put in the bin. What's wrong with fantasy? It worked for Tolkien and Asimov, Martin, Rollins, anybody else. But no, 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 it has to be literary prose. What does literary prose mean? She was a cat, a small cat, a feline of phantasmagorical efficiency, lost, alone and afraid in a harsh world, desperate, needing comfort and queen. She pleaded for the attention of a stranger passing on that grey highway of life, the kindness of an unknown soul transcending its life's passage, seeking his own hope, searching for his own way. She was his femme fatale, and he was a lone wolf, and she was his only guide to his fortress of solitude. That sort of twaddle. We have a dog. Oh, hello. Come help. Oh. It's dog time. So, after reading through hours and hours worth of, of websites and looking at agents and seeing who will not take sci-fi, who doesn't want this, doesn't want that, who only are interested in recipe books or children's books or picture books, we've ended up with this list. Some agencies have more than one agent that would be suitable. Then you have to pick which one to send to because most agencies don't share. You send it to one agent and they don't like it, they refuse, and they don't pass it on to someone else. 
There are a few that actually do share around, but most agents seem to be very closed and don't want anyone else to see what they've been given, even if they're rejecting it. So it comes to sending an email. You need to add a cover letter explaining what your book's about, your personal history is, whether you've got websites or entered competitions, etc. Details, anything that will give them insight into you. And also any books that they've published that you've read that you loved. It's always a bonus or a positive if you find someone that is on the same wavelength as you when it comes to reading material. Now, I've done this for a few years now, too many years, <clears throat> but it's not a perfect system or I would have signed to an agent already. But agents don't just want a cover letter and a synopsis and so forth, they want more. And I understand you're getting 30,000 emails a year and probably 90% of which are absolute twaddle, you know, I wrote a book. It is a good book. This is my book. Please read my book. You kind of just be like, mm, whatever. So you kind of set some hoops to jump through. But some of them are a little bit OTT, shall we say. Most want a synopsis, a cover letter with some details, and the first three chapters. But some want the first chapter. Some want the first 25 pages. Some want 15 pages. I've even had send me the first page. What are you going to learn from one page that I can spell, I guess? There are still some that want more. They want, and we'll let one explain, shall we? Lord Ponsonby Smythe, literary agent here. Hello. So I understand you want to submit a manuscript to me. Is that correct? Yes, right. Will you see that hoop over there? Yes, the one on fire. Yes. I want you to jump for it. Yes, that's right. Jump for it. Yes. Yes, I know. It's hanging over a cliff. Yes, that's the one. Go ahead. Jolly good. Underneath it is just some rocky ground, some spikes, bits of broken glass, you know. Right. Understand that? Jolly good. Now, while you're doing this, all the time I wish for you to recite your manuscript by heart, yes? And then, once you've landed, I wish to receive the manuscript from your hand. This manuscript must be in 14 point Times New Roman, all the way through. Every page must be stamped with the page number, the manuscript's name, your name, who it's addressed to, thus me, Lord Ponsonby Smythe, and be double spaced Times New Roman all the way through. Correct? Obviously, your spelling and things must be correct. Any spelling mistakes or any variations on spelling from the English will mean that the manuscript will be dismissed out of hand immediately. So, no made up names and no made up creatures or anything in that sort of fantastical rubbish. No, no. Must be, must be good Queen's English and a synopsis, which must be in italic times new roman 13 point i require a cover letter written in 13 point times new roman which also is stating all affiliation with the british monarchy your peerage your line of ascension to the monarchy and all publications to national newspapers none of these fly-by-night pamphlet magazine things established publications and if you are not a celebrity or the spouse of a celebrity then please do not bother to submit that's simple enough isn't it i mean what more could i do i'm bending over backwards just to give it give you the chance yes well if that's not good enough then i don't want to know so simple easy and not a problem there you go thank you goodbye so then you've written your letter to an agent and you sit and you wait 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 and you wait, you wait, you wait. It can be a couple of weeks, a couple of months. Some just don't even bother replying. They just ignore you. But occasionally, rarely, one in a, a thousand actually write back. And I don't just mean the thank you for submitting, but at this time we find it not suitable for our agency. Standard response. No, no. 
Occasionally, you'll get, thank you for writing to me, I'm sorry that this isn't, isn't for me at this time, and an actual personal letter. Granted, it doesn't happen often, and I've had four. Joanne Wynn, Lisa Rogers with Jabberwocky, Rebecca Ritchie from AM Heath, and Daniel Zigler. I can name the four agents that have replied. That's how rare they are. And they are held in high esteem. So much so that they will someday, somewhere, be a character in a book. Look out for a Zigner or Richie somewhere because it means that much to us to actually get a personalised response. Uh, as I've said, I've had some interest, but not enough to have to, to do this again for another year. But this year, 2019, it's going to be the year. This year, I'm making this video, I'm going to write these emails and before too long, there might be a video with me talking about how an agent said, yay! Not that the dogs were interested. Do you like the poor? This is very her statement for the day. Well, that's that. I guess I should get back to sending these emails. And we'll see you soon. Bye. Still a ton of banging and crashing and dragging of stuff from the idiot upstairs. Yes, yes. Let me start she's falling off. There they are.